e-retailers appear to have won Christmas. With online shopping due to set records and Amazon alone, get this, shipping more than one billion items. But while digital gifting has made gift giving more convenient, e-gift returns can be a total scrooge. Joining us with some tips on how to return those dud gifts is WSJ's Nathan Oliveras Giles. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. So Nathan, you set out to navigate this complicated web of online gift returns, you know, the shipping costs, the receipt rules, all of that fun stuff. And your first tip is actually to wait until 2017 to send those gifts back. Why? Well, you know, uh, for a lot of folks, this is a time of travel, a lot of stress anyways, and you probably have all your family together in one place. Uh, some people even have this week off. Uh, so, you know, with all that stress, and this is gonna be complicated, uh, it's kind of almost a bit of a break before you really dive into it. Um, now, the reason why you can do this is because most retailers have extended their holiday uh, return uh, window. Normally, you get about uh, two weeks, um, but Apple is giving you to, until January 8th. Uh, Best Buy is pushing their return uh, window out until January 15th. Uh, Amazon, Jet, and Overstock have all uh, pushed their return window until January 31st. And then Walmart has a 90-day policy, so that should cover basically anything you got. So basically, you've got some time here. And since it's going to be complicated, you're going to have to you know, read through some confusing policies. You're going to have to wade through all this. It's, it's kind of a, a way to say, give yourself a breather. You don't have to rush up tomorrow. All right, I like that advice. And speaking of re reading through these confusing policies, you also say pay attention to shipping costs because sometimes you don't get those free return labels. What are your options if your gift doesn't come with a free return? Yeah, well, it really depends on the retailer. So Amazon and Apple, they will pay for shipping if you want to mail stuff in. Uh, but Walmart, for example, whether it was bought in a store or it was bought online uh, or through one of their apps, uh, they don't uh, accept any returns via mail. So you none. have to take none at all. None, none wow. at all. Yeah. So if if you get something from them, you have to take it into a physical store. Uh, Best Buy, uh, they will uh, make you pay the shipping, uh, so, but they will take it via mail. But, you know, there's plenty of stores around, so they really want you to come in. Uh, and then Overstock, they're an example of a company who does some things a little different. They'll deduct the cost of the shipping from the value of your return, and then they'll give you whatever's left over in the form of store credit via a gift card. Right. So it's, it's a but little But you're still waiting so. for that gift card to come in the mail, right? I mean, this, isn't a, this doesn't all happen in one day. Yeah, no matter what, if you're doing something via mail, it's going to take some time. You're going to have to send it back. They're going to have to take a look at the item. They're going to have to make sure it's good enough to their standards. And then they'll give you a credit. And it's going to take a couple weeks, probably. Right. And speaking of the credit, you know, you're not likely to get cash. If you were not the original purchaser, you're not getting your money back. Is there any way to get around that for people who just don't want store credit to a certain store? The only way to really get around it uh, uh, that I found, uh, well, I mean, if you can convince someone in your family to trade you an actual gift card for cash <laughs> uh, because they want to go shopping there, that's one option. There's also a, a popular kiosk uh, company called Coinstar, and it's usually where you take loose change to turn it into cash. Well, they accept more than 100 uh, different uh, retailer gift cards in their kiosks, uh, and that's an option. But they will uh, take a cut of about 15 to 40% oh, wow. of the cash value of the card. Yeah, so you're going to be getting a lot less back no matter what. You're going to be taking a loss here. Um, <clears throat> now, there are some options, uh, uh, but usually what happens is the money will not go to you. They'll go to the person who, who, who bought the item. So Apple, uh, Best Buy, Microsoft. And that could be awkward because then they know you returned it. it. Exactly. Uh, they'll offer those refunds, but it'll go back to the person who bought it. <laughs> that's just tipping them off to the fact that you didn't like the yeah, lousy It's like a thank you, but gave. no thank you. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Definitely embarrassing situations. Last but not least, you point out two retailers that are a bit awkward with gift returns. What's the scoop on Jet.com and Zappos? Oh, Jet.com is arguably the worst when it comes to this. Uh, they have oh. no way at all for the person who receives the gift to initiate the return. Now, they offer free returns uh, on their website. It's one of the big perks. And they'll even give you a discount when you buy an item if you forego that free return because hopefully you'll want to keep it. Smart. But, yeah, which is smart. Uh, and maybe the person who bought you a gift from Jet.com took advantage of that. But no matter what, if you, if you got a gift from Jet.com and you don't want it, the only way to initiate a return is through the person who gave you the gift. So basically, the only option you have is to go to that person and say, hey, I didn't like this, or it's the wrong size, or not my color, or whatever it might be, and then they have to start that process on your behalf. So 
you're basically totally out of luck when it comes to Jet.com. Um, Zappos is a little different. Uh, they don't offer any uh, gift cards. They don't offer any store credits. And they'll only refund the, the credit or debit card of the purchaser. But if you have the purchaser's uh, phone number, email address, uh, and physical address uh, for the account, they'll be able to look up the gift and then they can let you perform an exchange without tipping off the gift giver, but it only is allowed for something that's of equal value uh, or lesser. So if you see that's, something that you like that's a little bit more expensive, not going to happen. That just blows my mind because that's shoes. You know, who gets yeah. shoes that actually fit? That's amazing. Uh, Almost never. <laughs> Nathan, thank you so much for the great tips. And I also want to point out your article online has plenty more of these. So people should go check it out. Thank you for being here. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you.